So let me just let me just recap that one. So first of all, you go into today's course like this. You find introduction to unit test exercises like this. You copy that link by clicking the small code button right here, and you copy the link. You go to your Visual Studio. In your Visual Studio, you go and you say clone repository, and I put in the URL that I just copied. And then please don't put this on your desktop when you save this. It's just, you can do it, it's okay, but you'll probably get some kind of firewall exception, and it's just freaking annoying. So put it into a work folder on the C drive or something like that. Just don't put it in your desktop. Your firewall tries to protect you there, just so you know it. So what I would do is I would go in and find my C drive, and uh, here I would create a new app, and I'll just clone it. And remember, when you clone a repository, you get a copy of the code. You don't have to worry about, by mistake, destroying everybody's code in here, okay? It's a clean copy. And that's the same thing. If you guys get to any point where you think I've messed everything up, <coughs> try, delete everything, clone again, and just try it once more if, if that's the case. Now, when my solution is actually downloaded right now, it'll automatically try to build the solution. It won't run the unit test automatically, but it'll try and build the solution. And um, you'll probably get errors there. But if it didn't, you can press the build up here. And then you can say rebuild solution and it'll make sure that everything is built properly. You should get some kind of notice like that saying rebuild all once succeeded like this and no failures. So that should kind of be your, your goal for now. Okay, when that is done, you should be able to right click on solution level over here like this. And then you should be able to say run tests like this. If that is not available, there's probably something under test right here that says run um, or test explorer or something like that. You should run that one to get started. I'll just run all tests for now and you'll see that most of them fail. Not all of them, but most of them will fail. And you get something like this, hopefully a test explorer that pops up with the, with the tests. Now you can move all, all, of, all of this can be moved around. So if you don't like the windows, how they're set up right now, you can move them wherever you want. You can set up an environment looking like NetBeans. It's just kind of drag and drop in like you want. When you get up and running right here, it should show six test passing because I made some constant tests that pretty much just says, I expect the string is this. And I made those because then I'm sure that your test environment is running if some pass and some fail. So you should have the exact same numbers as me right here for now, okay? Okay, so now we need to start solving these tests. And before we do that, let me give you guys an overview about what's actually in the solution. I'm going to talk a little bit about this later, but there's a difference between folders, projects, and solutions. And I'm going to give you guys an overview about that when you start creating your own projects. But right now, just understand that we have a solution and a project, and I have two folders under that project. One folder is the test folder, and that's where everything that you shouldn't touch resides. But it's A-OK -okay if you guys want to try and write your own unit tests. Again, this is your code now. You cloned it, do whatever you want with it. You cannot destroy my code. You can just reclone it, so it's OK if you want to play around with it. If I go into one of these tests, you can see the constant test right here. That's the one that gives us success right now. So notice right here, these are some pretty simple tests, right? It says, I expect that this constant is yes, and it is. I can tell you that. You don't have to go there. So that's kind of the unit test. And this is not that useful because they're all passing, but you'll notice right here, there's actually a cool feature of you actually showing what tests will pass and what tests will fail. So I have the green icon, that means that every test for this one passed. Let's jump into the other one and I'll show you that you can actually see now the areas that didn't pass. Before we do it, I wanna show you some pretty cool, a pretty cool feature that .NET have right here and that's called regions. So you'll notice each of these guys right here has been collapsed. But when I expand them, there's actually a small region tag right here. Hashtag region and then some kind of name. And when I scroll down, you'll notice there's also an end region right here. Hashtag end region. Now that means that I can actually collapse an area. And that's pretty neat when you write code because now you can start collapsing your different sections inside a file. If you have files that are 
a bit larger than a basic file. Okay, so I've done that for each of the areas. And again, you'll notice right here, I can see that this one actually passed. And that's because I made a null reference test. Don't have to get what it is. It's just there. So I know again that the code runs. And then later on, I made some simpler tests. Like for instance, the first one you need to fix when I let you guys off is this one where you have to prove that you make a method called length of string. And that one should return the length of the string. Surprise! So the goal is pretty much that this test, again, you don't touch this code at all, okay? You just have to fix it so that when you pass in, when this is passed in, it should return the number 12. I'll show you how. <laughs> so why do I even show you guys these test files? Um, well, that's because if you guys get stuck, maybe there's help in here, okay? Because if, as, as you get better at testing later on during the semester, you can actually in a test pretty much read what should happen. For instance, let's just take this test. I'll show you how to solve it. But I have a test here that says when I call some strings with one string and another string, both are numbers, it should return the sum of those two strings. Okay, so, so hopefully you can actually read the test and get an understanding about what the idea behind the production code is actually all about. Now, where's the production code? Well, that's in the source folder. So if I open the source folder, and again, I open the utils folder, you'll see there's actually matching classes to the test one. We have a constant test and a string util test. We have a constant and a string util. So this is the production code right here. And here I have the methods that you guys need to, this is your code. This is where you need to write some code now. And let's just take the first one. We have a lot of failing tests right here one test that passes and nine tests that fails. The goal is to create a length of string method that returns the length of the string as an integer. And right now all it does is kind of throw an exception and say, I'm not implemented yet. Okay. So you of course need to fix that. This is easy. So I won't show you this one. Let's take the next one. There's another one called sum of strings right here. This needs to take, two strings as, uh, and convert them into integers, join the integers so they get summed and then return it as a string. Again, if you read the unit test, you'll actually be able to figure that out yourself. Okay, well, let's try and fix it. Now, welcome to um, the world of C-sharp where methods are written in uppercase, not lowercase. In C-sharp, we write methods in uppercase. Oh, and classes in uppercase. Oh, and properties in uppercase. So everything is in uppercase. Except private properties or private variables, they will be written in lowercase. But most of the time, you can also see variables in here will be written in lowercase. But in general, everything is written in uppercase in C-sharp when we're talking about public um, things that you can access. Okay? So that's why you'll notice that some strings is actually uppercase in the beginning right here. So let me try and help you out, guys out with this one. Now, normally I would make a unit test that this is where unit test gets, gets so powerful. I would start out by making unit test that makes sure that both strings are actually not null. If they were, I would throw an exception and that's how I would test it. But I trust you guys, so let's skip that for now and just try and take these two values and convert them into integer values. First of all, I want to return an integer, right? So let's say um, number one right here, that's going to be an integer. Oop. Nombre. Equal, it's the international class, so I use the Spanish, I think it is. Uh, nope. So it should be able to pass this, and you would probably do something like integer dot pass. Yes? Yes? We won't do that. We'll do, because actually, uh, in C-sharp, we have a pretty cool convention that makes it so that we can write something that looks a lot like what you're used to with types, but they actually work like classes. So they have all the functionality that you do with classes written as types. What do I mean? Well, you can write int like this, but behind the scenes, what you're actually doing is you are mapping to an integer, but behind the scenes, C-sharp takes care of that for you. So when I write int right here and, and do a dot, you'll see that here is the different things I can do with an int value. I can pass it, I can max min value it, and I can try pass it. Let's just do the pass for now. And notice again, it's uppercase. 
Okay, methods uppercase. So I'll pass this guy, and what do I want to pass? I want to pass the string value of one. It's called value one, Lars. Okay, sorry about that. It's okay. Thank you, you're welcome. So this is how I pass from string to end. But this may, might fail, okay? I might get an exception here for different reasons. First of all, what if the value is null? How do I pass null to an integer value? You can't, so you'll get a null pointer exception, null reference exception. Uh, what if it's actually not a number? What is the letter L? How would you pass that to a number? You can't, so it'll actually be an, be an exception. So again, we, might we probably should guard ourselves against all these different exceptions. And you'll actually notice if I mouse over right here, it says, I'm going to return an int value. You get a space. And then I'm going to pass something. This is the method. And then actually here you can see all the different exceptions you might end up with. Okay. Now the overflow exception is if you try to pass a number that can't be within an integer, instead of just fake, uh, making your code fail because it goes to minus, it'll actually throw an exception instead and says, I can't pass that. Okay. So the, here's the different exceptions you might get from this. Right now we're just uh, totally in the dark and we expect that everything will go well. Let's try and do number two right here and say int pass uh, value two. So there we go. Now we have the two different numbers. Now we kind of need to sum them. Okay, and here I hope you guys can remember it. Okay, how do we add two numbers together? Oh, I won't. Um, sum value equal number one plus the other one. There we go. Um, that's amazing. So now we have the value, but I said that I actually want to return it not as an integer, but as a string. Okay, so again, just like you had to in Java, we are type safe right here. So we can't just pass anything bad back. So we need to kind of uh, take the sum value. You want to return it, right? Return sum value. And then you can actually do a small thing called two string, just like you used to. And just have to remember there's a couple of parentheses here in the end because it's actually a method. How did you know that? Well, because I've used this for a long time. And this is kind of where it's freaking annoying using C sharp in the beginning. That is, if I want you to know the, okay, let me help you out here. If I want you to know the length of a string, how do we know if it's a method or it's actually a property because they are both uppercase now. Now you'll notice right here, if you look at the different um, signatures at the icon right here, you'll see when you have this wrench, it's actually a property. And when you have this square or box or whatever you want to call it, it's actually a method. Okay, so that's, that's kind of how you see the difference between these different methods and properties. We'll dive into creating properties when we get to classes, so don't worry, you'll learn how to do it. Sweet, so now I've made something that I feel should actually fix my, my test right here. And I'll just rerun the test by clicking this big, rerun all uh, unit tests, or again, right clicking over here in the top. Now it's, it's pretty important you don't right click, you can right click a single test, if you want to also actually, and run the test for this single one. But I always pretty much just run everything. Why? Because my new production code might have broken another test when we start moving forward. So just run everything. And the easiest way is just to run it down here. And then hopefully we'll get more greens and less red down here compared to before. Yay. So now I can see actually right here, I can see now I have five tests passing for this one where it was zero before. Now you guys just have to do the same for the rest of it. Um, so why is it five tests for a single one? Well, again, if you are interested in unit testing, um, you'll actually see that I had two different ways of testing. I have what I call a fact. That's running a single test, right? A single fact of life. And that is this one I'm doing right here. That's a single fact. But then you can also run a theory. And that's actually a way for me to do multiple tests against a certain fact. So it pretty much just means that the fact will only run one test, but this will run one, two, three, four tests with different values. And it's pretty easy to actually define them. So again, if you guys want to play around with that, that's fine. The main goal today 
is that I feel that everybody have Visual Studio up and running, can run unit testing, and um, kind of feel comfortable with just working with a string right here for now.